In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a device that allows you to measure geyser heights in the Diet Coke and Mentos experiment. What's really cool about this device is that it's really easy to build. It allows you to carry out the experiment with no mess whatsoever. And it also provides a way for you to have a close-up look at the foam and the bubbles produced in the reaction. To build the device, you're going to need a 4-foot fluorescent tube guard, a bottle bushing, and a 1-inch Schedule 40 PVC socket fitting. You can also use a ring clamp to tighten everything down, but that's really optional. First, insert the bottle bushing into the PVC socket fitting and press down hard to make sure you got a good snug fit. Now just slide the tube guard over the PVC socket fitting. It's really that simple. Something you should be aware of is that the tube guard only will fit over one end of the socket fitting. So if it doesn't seem like the tube guard's going to fit, just flip the socket fitting around and the tube guard should slide on nicely. If you wish, you can use the ring clamp to seal everything tightly, but really in my experiments I've found that things remain sealed quite well even without the ring clamp. I often like to measure geyser heights in my experiments. So that I can do this, I take a Sharpie marker and a meter stick and I mark off the appropriate heights all along the tube. Now we're ready to conduct the experiment. I'm just using the bottle bushing to securely attach the device to a freshly opened bottle of Diet Coke. Now I'm ready to just drop a few Mentos candies down the tube. It looks like the foam has gone about one meter high. For this experiment, I'm going to drop a Mentos candy into a two liter bottle of Diet Coke. Two liters of Diet Coke produces a lot more foam than smaller bottles, so for this experiment, I built the device using a much larger eight foot fluorescent tube guard. All right, let's drop in a Mentos candy and see what happens. Oh, wow. In this case, the geyser went over two meters high. One thing I really like about this device is that it allows you to clearly see the foam and bubbles produced in the experiment. As a result of this, I've been able to see that the bubbles formed in Coke that you see on the left tend to be larger than the bubbles produced in Diet Coke, which you see over on the right. Isn't that interesting? What I like best of all about this device is that it allows you to carry out numerical measurements on a whole host of investigations. For example, which type of soda produces the tallest geysers? Do different flavors of Mentos candies produce different heights of geysers? How might the temperature of the soda affect geyser heights and bubble sizes? If you happen to build one of these devices, be sure to let me know in the comments. But I'm really interested to hear if you try out some investigations and learn something interesting or new. So be sure to let me know in the comments if you do that too. Happy experimenting!